What's going on, Phantom Army? It's your boy Phantom Stilts, and welcome back once again to a brand new tutorial video. Today, we're going to be looking at how we can make our stream within Streamlabs OBS and converting it to YouTube as a live stream, how to make it look like absolute perfection. So, I hope you guys are ready. We're going to get right into it here. Without any further ado, make sure to like and subscribe. You guys are brand new to the channel. We are almost at 650 subscribers on the channel. You guys have been absolutely killing it with the subscriptions. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you guys know exactly when my videos go live without any further ado like i said let's get right into the tutorial guys all right guys so here we are in Streamlabs obs uh once again so uh, what i'm going to show you guys today is the settings that i use for my stream on youtube uh, i streamed on twitch for a very long time for about six months uh seven months but then i felt i had more of a following on youtube so i will be exclusively streaming on youtube uh, i don't have a set schedule as of yet but if you guys are interested make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel and hit that notification bell like i said in the intro that way you guys can see when my streams go live i played a bunch of games on stream i'll uh, be starting to play uh ESO uh, on a regular basis as well as Apex and some other slew of games. So without any further ado, let's get right into the tutorial here. So uh, here we are in Streamlabs OBS, like I said, and uh, we're gonna show you guys the settings that I personally use for uh, my stream on YouTube and how I make it look so clear and with uh, picture perfect quality, I think, uh, and how you can stream at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Now, a uh, little bit of a disclaimer, I am using a two PC setup. Uh, the PC that you guys are seeing the camera on right now is actually uh, my gaming PC that I'm recording on. And then I have a second laptop, which is a four core processor. I believe it's an ASUS 550 VX laptop. Uh, it's a couple years old. I think it's about three or four years old. I got it when I first started YouTube, but it does the trick nonetheless. Uh, so the laptop is actually in charge of encoding and streaming uh, the actual stream. And then I actually game on the um, my, my gaming PC. And I actually capture all of the video through an Elgato HD60 capture card. Uh, so if you guys don't have a capture card, there are many slew, there, there's a definitely a couple ways that you can possibly uh, stream your, um, your st you actually put out your stream without a capture card. Uh, it's a little bit different and uses a lot of bandwidth and a lot of internet. Um, but what we're going to do today is I'm assuming that you guys have a capture card. Uh, if you don't, uh, there are a couple different ways that you can possibly do it, which is an NDI source, which is streaming the gaming PC and the uh, streaming PC over your internet. Uh, and that's a way that you possibly can capture gameplay and audio and things like that. But what I'm saying today is that I'm basically assuming that you guys already have a capture card. Now, if you don't, the NDI source is probably the best uh, solution I would use in case you don't have that capture card. So without any further ado, let's get right into the settings. So they're actually the same process for whether you're console gaming or you are PC gaming. Now, like I said, a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm using a dual PC setup. So my stream is exclusively controlled by the laptop and then I game on my PC and it sends it through that capture card in order to capture the audio, the video and everything you guys see on screen. But anyways, so uh, the nice thing about a PC, if you guys are going to build a PC, there is no frame cap when a, when a, when a uh, gaming PC is running a game. The gaming PC will run the game to the best of its ability based on the hardware that you have inside of the PC. That makes sense to you. A console's frame cap is at 60 frames per second, at least for right now. Now with the Xbox Series X and the PS5 coming out, uh, the Xbox Series X, I believe, is said that it can run games up to 120 FPS. Um, like I said, there's no frame cap with a PC, so if you're going to game and you're comfortable with getting a computer and building a computer, I would suggest running a PC setup. Um, but if you only have the money, obviously, or, or exclusively brand uh, loyalty toward a console or a console such as a PS4, or excuse me, a PS5 and the Xbox Series X that's coming out, obviously, that's your prerogative. So uh, we'll get in right here to the settings. So we're going to go down and take our, drag our mouse cursor here to the left, uh, to this little cog down here on the left hand side that says settings. And what we're gonna do today is just focus on the video settings. I have a separate separate tutorial for your mic settings and things like that that I will link in the description. Um, it's actually one of my most viewed videos on YouTube, so if you guys wanna check that out, a lot of people really like it. It's got almost 40,000 views on it, uh, and is a really good way for you guys to test your audio as well as getting your mic and stuff all set up. So we'll go in first, and we're gonna look at the video tab. So. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the base canvas resolution. So the base canvas resolution, if we close out this window here, is actually gonna be what you're seeing on screen. So the video and the picture that I'm circling with my mouse cursor is actually the base canvas resolution. It's what you're going to see on screen when you're in Streamlabs, uh, when you're in Streamlabs uh, previewing your stream. 
So what we're gonna do here is go back down to settings, open this window back up, and we're gonna go back to video, set your base canvas resolution to 1920 by 1080. That'll give you the best picture quality in order to preview your stream and see what's going on. Next is your output scaled resolution. This is very important because the output scaled resolution is what your audience is actually going to see on stream, where your base canvas resolution is what you're previewing in Streamlabs. So your output scaled resolution, if you have a pretty beefy PC that you're just using to encode, um, I would set it to 1920 by 1080. That's gonna give you the best picture quality uh, that you can possibly get on stream. Now, if you're using a single PC setup in your console gaming, like I said, the settings are the exact same where you'll want to set your base canvas resolution to 1920 by 1080, and then your output scale resolution to 1920 by 1080. That will give you the best picture quality, whether you're console gaming or gaming on a PC setup. Uh, given that you have two PCs or a pretty beefy PC, if you have a PC setup uh, in order to run the game, uh, whatever other apps you have running, such as like Discord, TeamSpeak, something like that, and the game itself. So like I said, you're gonna have to have a very, very beefy PC to do it all on one computer, but like I said, I have a two PC setup. So my gaming laptop, or excuse me, my gaming PC is only running the game, and then my laptop is doing everything else in relation to the stream. Now your downscale filter, you're gonna to want to set this to Lansos, uh, sharp and scaling 32 samples. Again, that will give you the best picture quality that you can possibly get through Streamlabs OBS and the stream being sent to YouTube, it'll give you the best picture quality given your hardware. Uh, you wanna set your FPS type to common FPS values and then common FPS value to 60. So like I said, there's absolutely no frame cap when it comes to PC gaming. However, YouTube does have a frame cap of 60 FPS. So whether you're streaming at 4K uh, 60 FPS or you're streaming at 1080 FPS, 720 FPS, FPS frames per second is capped at 60 frames per second on YouTube. So that's the best picture quality that you can get through YouTube streaming at this time. Now that could change in the near future, uh, but as of right now, that is your, um, that's sort of your benchmark when it comes to frames per second. All right guys, so there we have all of our base canvas resolution, our output scaled resolution, our down scale filter, our FPS type, and our common FPS values, all set the way we want to, to make our stream look like absolute perfection. So the last thing we're gonna do is actually go to one more tab called output, which is up here on the top left. You're gonna wanna set your output mode to advanced. And then we're gonna look exclusively at the streaming tab. Now with recording, you can actually do a lot more and have a lot more headroom because you're not encoding uh, a stream and sending it off live where you're gonna retroactively um, record it and then edit it. So recording is a lot less taxing on your CPU and GPU. But for right now, we're talking about streaming. So we're gonna go back to the streaming tab. But uh, you don't need to worry about the audio track so much. Keep that at one. So the next thing we're gonna look at guys is the encoder. Now the encoder is responsible for basically encoding your stream or uh, capturing your stream and sending it out to YouTube or whatever the platform is that you choose to stream on. Uh, if you're going to use an encoder, uh, there's a couple different options when it comes to encoding your stream. You can use X264, which is the software on your PC uh, that uses your CPU to encode the stream. Now this is very, very taxing on your CPU. I would not recommend this. If you have an NVIDIA card or a uh, AMD card, uh, you're gonna have two different options uh, to encode the stream. It's gonna be an NVENC new, like you see one right here. That's the one I would use because it's a dedicated chip on your NVIDIA graphics card that's specifically for streaming. They've actually developed a chip that's uh, exclusively, uh, exclusively has the exclusive um, job of running your stream and encoding your stream. Uh, if you wanna use X264 and you have a pretty good CPU, go for it. I definitely wouldn't recommend using that if you have a, a dedicated graphics card like an NVIDIA like I'd have, I would definitely use NVENC new. The next thing we're gonna look at is the rate control, which is going to be CBR is the one that you wanna use. So there's a couple different options, like I said. CBR stands for constant bit rate. So what this is gonna do is if you set a bit rate, it's gonna try its best, uh, depending on your hardware and the capabilities of your personal computer or your PC that you're running your stream on, it's going to try to keep that bit rate at around 4,000. Now, obviously, um, we're not going to keep our bit rate at 4,000. If you have a pretty good PC, uh, you're gonna have to definitely bump that up. But what we're gonna do to determine our PC, uh, excuse me, our bit rate, is it's completely dependent on your internet. So if you have really good internet at your house or wherever you live, your domicile, uh, definitely go to this website and we're gonna pull it up here so the website we're gonna to go to, guys, is actually called speedtest.net, and this is the uh, speed test that you're gonna to wanna to run to develop, or actually 
uh, to secure and figure out your upload, download speed, and your ping based on the hardware and the internet and your computer. So once I have all the results, I'll come back and show you guys my results and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so here we are uh, back on the video and I just ran the speed test uh, for my, um, my internet running through my house. So as you guys can see, we tested our ping, our download speed, and our upload speed. So the biggest thing you wanna keep your eyes on, guys, when you're looking at your speed test results is your upload speed. Now with YouTube, let's go back to Streamlabs OPS. Now that we have this information, our upload speed's at 11.81. So with our, with in relation to our bit rate, that is how many kilobytes per second are running through your internet connection to send your stream off to YouTube. Now, there's another cap that YouTube uh, emphasizes and sets on your stream that it cannot exceed 9,000 kilobits per second. Now your upload speed in relation to your bit rate is actually a direct correlation to how many millibytes per second or kilobytes per second you can run uh, as your bit rate. So as you guys saw, our bit rate, or excuse me, our upload speed when we ran the speed test is 11.81. Now if I wanted to, I can't do it, but if I really wanted to, I could run it at 11,000 um, kilobits per second, which is relation to the 4,000 you see on the screen but we can't do that because like I said, YouTube has a cap of 9,000 kilobits per second. You, can, you cannot exceed that number. Uh, even if you're a partnered streamer or a partnered YouTube partner, you can't exceed 9,000 kilobits per second on stream. So what we can do though, is since I have an 11.81 upload speed, we can actually set this to the max quality that you can on YouTube, which is 9,000. So we're gonna set it to 9,000. We're gonna set it to 9,000 uh, kilobits per second that we can run through our stream. That is going to make the stream look crystal clear and perfect. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the keyframe interval. You're actually gonna to wanna to set this to two. And then the preset, you're gonna to wanna to set this to max quality. Now, if you set it to quality, uh, there's a thing called two pass encoding. Uh, now two pass encoding basically is exactly what it sounds like. It passes it through one time and passes it through the second time, making sure that the quality is picture perfect. Now, if you wanted to do quality and have a less strain load on your PC, you could set it to quality and do it that way. But if you have a two PC setup like I do, you obviously want the most quality and picture perfect and clear, uh, crystal clear picture that you can get, which is going to be max quality. You're gonna to wanna to set this profile to main, or excuse me, too high, that will have the best picture quality once again, telling your PC that you want the profile to be as high as possible as far as the picture quality is concerned, and then set that to max quality and you should be good to go there. Then what you're gonna wanna do after you set your profile, you're gonna wanna go down here to cycle visual tuning, make sure that is ticked, and then last but not least, the last two fields we're gonna go over is if you have multiple GPUs in your computer or your personal computer, you're gonna wanna set this to whatever GPU you want to do the encoding. Now, with my uh, streaming laptop, we only have one GPU inside there. So we're only gonna use uh, the zero because the zero starts at zero, which is your main GPU. And then you can obviously set it to one or two or how many GPUs you have in your personal computer. And then your max B frames is going to be two. So that guys is how you set up your stream on YouTube using a two PC setup or a single PC setup with a console. So if you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel. That way you guys can know whenever my streams go live as well as whenever I post, post a new video to the channel. Make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way you guys know exactly when all of my videos and my streams go live. But without any further ado, this is your boy Phantom Stilts. Thank you guys again so much for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, like I said. I will see you guys on the next video. Take care, guys.